been explaining a few home truths about the reality of working in journalism, which I would imagine they probably know already. But I was trying to be positive in terms of it is what they make it. That was a simple message that if they work extremely hard, have an aptitude for it, don't take no for an answer, do lots of work outside of their courses, then they're going to make themselves a lot more employable than the people who finish their course, um, apply for a few jobs, and then just wait for the, the letterbox to flap with a job offer. Um, so just make it very clear to them that the harder you work, the more the doors are likely to open for you. Um, and uh, they seem fairly receptive, hopefully. <laughs> One day I went to the press day for the closing of Highbury Stadium before they moved on Arsenal to the Emirates. And Arsene Wenger was doing his rounds of radio, TV, print. He was talking, talking, talking for hours. He's brilliant at those kind of things, really, really good. And he came into radio as one of the first ones. And there, were, there was two of us there, the local radio from London, Capital, and myself at, for Five Live and for all the BBC outlets. And... It was such a lovely interview, really lovely interview. He was waxing lyrical about what Highbury meant to him, about how he walked through the door and saw the bust of Herbert Chapman and Marble Halls and all the rest of it. And I'd already said to my colleague, I said, please, can you record my questions in case there's anything wrong with my mini disc? Anyway, finished the interview, and you just got that feeling of it's a really special interview. He'd spoken so well. And at the end of it, I really stupidly such a perfectionist that there was one question that I had an extra um in or something I thought well I'll just whip that out before I file it <sighs> wasn't concentrating properly and pressed the button and said are you sure you want to delete and I said yes and I meant that little tiny section not the whole thing I lost the whole thing and when I went to my colleague and went oh thank goodness I'd asked you to record my questions as well he played it back it had a hiss on it for some reason this old Morantz contraption so none of it made the airwaves and I had to beg Wenger at the end of the day to come back and just three questions and he did it because he's a bit of a legend like that but obviously he wasn't in the greatest mood by then. Lesson learned, don't tamper, just file. Yeah, Wenger is probably my favourite to interview, to be perfectly honest. I actually did have a quite an unpleasant experience with him once, it was a very difficult interview but I don't blame him for that, he was in a terrible mood because of the performance and didn't take kindly to my questions, but I had no problem with that. That's just the business. That's how it works. Um, there are some, there was one who wouldn't answer my questions because my eyes were too blue and he couldn't quite get over them. That was a weird one. Um, luckily, I didn't need too much from him. It was after a cup tie on a Tuesday night. Um, that was odd. And I've had a couple who you think they're not really taking my questions seriously here. And I, I really pride myself in asking questions properly, proper questions properly, so they don't give you the opportunity for them to just shut you down. Or, And I don't mind asking controversial questions. That's part of the job and part of the fun of the job for me. So I don't mind if they react badly, as long as I know I've done my job. But there are a couple who, one in particular, I can think I had to win him over by making comments about his team and his tactics and why they were winning matches and suddenly he looked at me and said oh you know your football don't you and then he gave me a nice interview after that so it doesn't happen very often at all it really really doesn't not these days <laughs>